in the tradition of our forefathers and our ancestors, and we will bow our heads to invite the presence of God. O gracious and the beloved Father, be I indeed thankful for your mercies and for your blessings, for bringing us all here safely this evening, as we celebrate those who have given back tirelessly to your people, dear God. We pray that this entire proceedings go smoothly and any spirit of deviation and confusion may be dispelled. We thank you for blessing everyone here in Jesus' name. Amen. The Honourable Member of Parliament for the constituency of Moruga Tableland <clears throat> and the Minister in the Ministry of Education, Dr. The Honourable Governor Francis, Ms. Pendergrass, the High Commissioner of Jamaica, Trinidad and Tobago, Special invited guests, our very esteemed awardees, ladies and gentlemen, American Hall. I stand here this evening with a rather simple task. It's a task of welcoming all of you to our, our very distinguished guests to this our first National American Award and Recognition Ceremony. Yes, today we continue with our celebration and recognition of American heritage. In proud tribute to our ancestors who arrived on these shores 200 years ago. I, like most of you, am a proud sixth, sixth generation direct descendant. I must admit, however, that I am somewhat overwhelmed by the significance of this occasion. And I am sure that for most Americans present on it, this is a true moment of pride as we award those amounts who are undoubtedly deserving of such public distinction and recognition. This event is a collaborative effort. It is hosted by the American Commission in collaboration with American Incorporation the Merit in Heritage Foundation and the American Limited, all of which are successor organizations to the original American Interest Group, the Amphi and Vashana Fraternity, founded by John Milton Hackshaw and others. Yes, we all should be proud of our very rich heritage and legacy as American descendants, and proud as well of our respective family lineages. However, most of us, sorry, we are all honored and proud to be Trinidadians and to be Unions, striving always for improvements in our respective communities. As I look into the audience, I see so many of you who have taken time to ensure your presence here this evening with us. I even recognize some who have only recently discovered the American heritage and who have called and communicated with the commission officers to secure their attendance this evening. So again I say heartfelt welcome to you all. Even though we may be dressed in our formal wear and may be in the presence of our esteemed special awardees, I ask that we relax and use this evening as an opportunity to network and meet and chat with other Americans, descendants, who you may not have previously known or have not been in contact with for some time. In this regard, I pay special welcome to our American brothers, sisters, and cousins from our heartland on Moruga Road, Matilda Junction, Hard Bargain, Indian Walk, Fifth and Sixth Company villages, etc. I welcome, I welcome American descendants of Port of Spain, Tuna Puna, Chaga River, Lego Martin and environments, and as far away as the United States and the United Kingdom. Indeed, we are all here. We are all here with pride to celebrate together. This event, this evening, however, marks the final chapter 
in the year-long American Bicentennial celebrations. Early events hosted by American Incorporation American Heritage Foundation all recognize the importance and significance of the settlement of free land owning black people in this country long before the arrival of indentured labor and decades before the abolition of slavery. Tonight, we are recognizing 26 descendants and two special honorary Americans and one interest group, all for their individual and collective efforts and accomplishments. These awards will also include nine persons who are no longer with us, but the value of whose contributions can hardly be challenged or rebutted. You will all understandably disappointed when on Tuesday we were advised that the Prime Minister, due to his hectic schedule, particularly in this political season of local government election, will not be able to be with us. We are happy and excited to be advised that the Honourable Minister of Community Development, Cutting Arts, will in fact be attending and we expect her arrival shortly. <coughs> in closing, I would be remiss as Chairman of the Commission if, it, if I did not take the opportunity to publicly acknowledge the very recent pronouncements of the government with respect to plans for the development of fishing and farming facilities in the rural community. This is indeed a welcome sign of the future development of our heartland. I take this very moment to mention two awardees who are not here with us tonight. Most of you must know Mr. Augustus Lewis and Mr. Selwyn McLeod, both of whom are not in the best of health at the moment. And I ask you for your prayers to wish them a speedy recovery. Finally, we wish to sincerely thank you for your presence and trust that you all will have an enjoyable time and a very enlightening experience with us this evening. We thank you. Member of Parliament, Marula Tabelan, Dr. Lovell Francis, special invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, and ladies. American Rule Call. We were told that giants are men and women who accomplished great feat. The late Nelson Mandela, the late Mahatma Gandhi, and the late Abraham Lincoln of this world. Seated in the audience tonight are the offsprings of giants in a plural sense. This is the story of the Americans. The story of men and women who refused to accept the brutality of slavery and gave their lives for our very existence. The War of 1812 was significant for these giants as it was the year that they shed their slavery garments and were adorned in royal uniform to fight for the principles of justice, the right to be treated equally, and the right to determine their own destiny against their colonial rulers. The Americans were runaway slaves who were cornered or grounded in their Baptist feet that raised their spirit in the moments of weakness as they held truth to the old Baptist spiritual song which echoed throughout the ages. They had weary hearts and wounded souls as they traveled along their pilgrim roads. The journey of the Americans from the slavery plantation to uniformed officers in the Corps of Colonial Marines demonstrated that they were numbered among the first freedom fighters. As you look at the screen, the names you see are a symbol of hope, aspiration, perseverance, sacrifice, determination, and a human spirit that could never be and would never be quenched. Brought to Trinidad in batches of six companies in the southeastern part of the country within virgin territories. The first company was settled in Hindustan, second company was settled in Piti Cafe, third company was settled in the Indian Oak area, fourth company was settled in Harbagen, and subsequently resettled in New Ground. The fifth and sixth company maintained their original names. Each family was granted 16 acres of crumb land 
for their dedication and sacrifice they made in the War of 1812. What was Virgin Acreage? American built roads. What was Virgin Terrain? American built bridges. What was Virgin Swamp? American built churches. What was Virgin Plain? American built homes. What was useless? American built a legacy. Our destiny are tied in that one act of faith that binds every American together. Our ancestors gave us the ability to dream, the impossible dream, to believe in the impossible and to take a leap of faith that will carry us through every hardship, every hurt, and every disappointment, but greater than that, to carry us through our greatest triumph, that is, being Americans, the greatest of people. The journey of the American from the United States to Trinidad is a story of love, commitment, trust, and utter human determination. 200 years later, the journey of the Americans continue. 200 years later, we stand committed to our legacy. 200 years later, we are Americans forever. We stand together, we embrace our heritage together, we believe in our past together, we look with great expectations to our future. Ladies and gentlemen, the American Roll Call. Ladies and gentlemen, I now invite our Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Dr. The Honorable Nian Elizabeth Gaspi Dolly, to the podium. Dr. Dolly. The Honorable Minister, the Ministry of Education, and Member of Parliament for Maruga Tableland, Dr. Lovell Francis, Chairman of the American Commission, Mr. Courtney McNish, awardees, distinguished guests, members of the media, ladies and gentlemen, good evening. Permit me to recognize my very supportive husband, Donald, who sits in the audience with me. I would like to let you know that though I was invited here in my capacity of Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, I am speaking to you this evening on behalf of the Prime Minister of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, who has asked me to represent him here, and so the sentiments expressed here are his own. So on behalf of the Prime Minister, Dr. Keith Christopher Rowley, I am very delighted to be here with you this evening to share in this award ceremony. I am also pleased to be here to witness your presentation of those awards to those citizens whom you have chosen to honor for the exceptional role which they have played in the development and growth of their respective communities and the nation as a whole. On behalf of the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago, I extend my heartiest congratulations to you all. Entrapped in the 1812 Civil War, ferociously waged between the United States of America and the United Kingdom was a community of African-American slaves unwittingly drawn into battle. The story unfolds that they truly believed that the British had come to release them from bondage. That today, 200 years following this bitter encounter, the sons and daughters of these brave and stout-hearted African-American slaves can assemble together as free men and women to celebrate the legacy of their ancestors is a tribute to the dauntless spirit of adventure and endeavor which characterized their forefathers' quest for liberation and advancement. It is a living monument to their determination to lead successful lives as integral contributors to the growth and development of their adopted homeland. And yet, in spite of so much that has been written and the many stories told, there remains an alarming void of information and knowledge evidenced by the paucity of nationwide recognition and appreciation of the community of whom I speak. I refer, of course, to those tried and tested laborers in the vineyard, those African-American Marines warmly and affectionately addressed as the Americans, an identity 
indisputably synonymous with the phenomenal increments of progress made, especially on the central south coast of the island of Trinidad. The fact that the average citizen of Trinidad and Tobago is not readily conversant with the history of the Americans and their immeasurable contribution to the development of our nation is a disturbing shortcoming. And I assure you, the government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago intends to address this. For example, how many of us are aware that it was the Civil War of 1812 between the United States and Britain waged along the Atlantic coast of Maryland, Virginia, and Georgia that spawned the birth of the company villages right here in Maruga, Trinidad? How many of us are aware that after Britain succumbed to America, some 761 African-American Marines who fought against their ex-colonial masters took up an offer and came to Trinidad in six batches or companies. How many of us are aware that here in Trinidad and Tobago is where they were renamed the Americans and that this is how the company villages of Maruga originated? Many of you may be aware, but there are many others who are not aware in Trinidad and Tobago. <laughs> A common thread runs through the wealth of literature which has been written on the subject. Historians of the caliber of Michael Anthony, John Hackshaw, Boise Huggins, and the Member of Parliament from Ruger Tableland, our own Dr. Lovell Francis, are among the few who have taken the time to document their research on the Americans. We owe them all a debt of gratitude for undertaking such an important initiative. The records show that of the six companies, the first settled in Aparima, the second near Indian Walk, the third at Mount Pleasant, the fourth in Guayacara, the fifth in Lengua, and the sixth company in Matilda Junction. Dr. Francis, I hope I'm getting the history right. <laughs> it is of interest to note that these villages were all located on the periphery of what was then named Mission of Savannah Grande, now known as Princess Town. So if today, Princess Town is bursting at the seams as one of our fastest growing commercial centers of Trinidad and Tobago, much of this distinction will have to be attributed to the Americans upon whom Mission of Savannah Grande relied for their growth and sustenance. A few of the Americans settled in Laventil and some in Carony. Those who settled in Naparima met resistance in the form of protests from the estate owners. Happily, the governor of the day dismissed their protests principally on the grounds that the soil of Naparima was arable and very fertile. Historian Michael Anthony revealed to us that the fourth company refused the land they were offered because it consisted of poor soil and it was a hard bargain. And of course, that name does ring a bell. <laughs> They were eventually accommodated in another area, which we now know as New Grant. The Americans brought with them their indigenous creative skills and special talents. Many were granted acres of fertile land, as we heard, to hold in perpetuity, perpetuity sorry, and to grow crops that were needed for their survival. They planted bananas, corn, rice, cassava, and other small crops. They served as masons, blacksmiths, and carpenters in the sugar and cocoa estates. Some worked as woodsmen, felling trees to make way for construction of new settlements and access roads. John Hackshaw, himself a former member of the American fraternity, reminded us that the African-American settlers brought with them the Baptist faith of the Second Great Awakening. The Baptists that settled in the company villages were exposed to the British Baptist Missionary Society's influence. Those that settled in the north of Trinidad practiced the beliefs they brought from America, which incorporated their African religious practices and beliefs, and out of that came the spiritual Baptists. This enlightenment is of deep historical significance because the spiritual Baptist faith has pervaded the society today. But again, how many of us are aware of its origins? 
It is recorded that after a few years, the Baptist faith expanded among the settlers and a new spiritual movement called the Shango emerged, and that became the main religion in the American populated company villages. It is now more contemporarily known as Orisha. At Fifth Company, Ebenezer Elliott, better known as Papa Niza, a descendant of the Americans, had established himself as a spiritual healer and one who possessed prophetic powers. I don't know how many of you know about Papa Niza. Because they say if you don't know, you're supposed to act Americans. This it's just a snapshot of the history and the richness of the culture of the Americans. And that goes on and on. And 200 years later, we are still here celebrating that cultural richness. All of us in Trinidad and Tobago have benefited exponentially and can continue to learn from the extraordinary examples set by the Americans. They continue to bless us with that rich trove of memories they willingly consented and desired to live together with those whom they met here, and they have never failed to share their treasured heritage with us, overflowing with a spirit of humility, dignity, and grace. We as a people continue to value the glorious moments in common which we and the Americans have shared together. We welcome and appreciate the determination of those of the present generation who continue to walk in the noble tradition of their ancestors. Yes, we have done great things together in Trinidad and Tobago, and yes, we will continue to do more. At the time when the Americans consented to come here as free men and women, slavery as we knew it was not yet abolished. In retrospect, the freeing of those African-American slaves as a form of gratitude for their role in the 1812 Civil War may well have been an isolated and unplanned forerunner to the eventual abolition of slavery, first in the British Empire in 1833 and subsequently in the United States in the year 1865. And so we know not the influence that that single act had on the history of the rest of the world and of all of us here in Trinidad and Tobago. Yeah, yeah. Today, the American community is calling on the government to grant them legal rights to land which they have been occupying for generations. The Prime Minister of Trinidad and Tobago has asked me to assure you that the Ministry of Rural Development and Local Development is already actively examining this long outstanding request with a view to designating the approximately 6,608 acres of land already earmarked in South Trinidad as a heritage site. In addition, in recognition and support of your celebrations and in keeping with the government's thrust to document the history of Trinidad and Tobago for posterity, the Prime Minister has requested the Minister of Public Administration and Communication to collaborate with the American community to arrange for a program of nationwide public education and awareness on the life and times of the Americans and the outstanding role which this community has played in the overall development of Trinidad and Tobago. And so, as I take my leave, permit me once again to bestow congratulations on behalf of the Prime Minister and the Government of the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago on all those worthy awardees this evening and to extend to all the Americans the nation's best wishes. May God bless you all and may God bless this country of Trinidad and Tobago. Movements toward the medal. Good evening. In 2004, I had the distinct honor and privilege to meet for the first time in my adult life, 
John and Althea McNish Ruiz. Uh, John and Althea had traveled to the US where John was expanding his research on the Americans. I had no idea that he was there. And he, I'm sure, had no idea that I lived there at the time. I will spare you the details of how we met, but suffice it to say, when we met, we, we had a really good time. We exchanged a whole lot of pleasantries and um, we had a whole lot of good old family talk. And just before I left, John placed in my hands a copy of his book, The Americans. I took a cursory review of the book really quickly, and I realized that I knew nothing of my family history. And um, it troubled me. So at that point, I purposed in my heart that I would try to read and get all the information that I can, and not just only for my education and for my ed edification and gratification, but you know, for my family, for my children, and for anyone who wants, wanted to know. Uh, so from that day, I said, this is it. I, this, this, this cannot continue like that. However, when John and Althea went back to England, apparently they, they took the enthusiasm and the zeal and the spirit that I had because it was um, 11 years later that I actually, I, I did nothing about it for 11 years. And um, it was 11 years later that I decided that I had the chance when my circumstances had changed to start to look and dig really deep into my family's history. Um, a couple of years ago when I really started, I realized that that initial encounter, that initial meeting was, a, was, not, was more providential than it was coincidental. And that it was a seed planted that was germinating for a number of years that began to grow. Moving forward, one year ago, the American Commission was formed, and part of the mandate was to actually do something meaningful that will fuse, unite, and bring American groups together and people. Um, we thought and thought a whole lot, and decided one event that will do something like that is what you, where you are, what you are experiencing today. After several hours and days and months of emails and telephone calls and Skype calls to various outlets, mints, and after deciding what we thought would be appropriate to honor those who have given selflessly to this movement, uh, the Northwest Territorial Mint out in Nevada, USA was uh, commissioned to prepare what we think uh, would last a, a medal, a medallion that we believe would last through the time, through, through time. Um, in order for this meant to do any work for you, you have to send your story. And they were so impressed with the story of the Americans. Most of the guys who work at that meant are history geeks. And um, they all knew of the War of 1812. But no one knew of those forgotten fighters. The colonial marines were forgotten. And they were so impressed that they volunteered free of charge to make a documentary on the production of this medal. Um, I tell you, it was so overwhelming. To me, um, I had to limit them to one minute because we don't have much time. So um, at this time, take a look. This um, documentary sends greetings and celebratory uh, salutations to the awardees and to all those who are attending this evening. Take a look. Northwest Territorial Mint has a proud history of creating medals that honor the achievements of men and women from around the world. We believe that those who are recognized for excellence 
should receive an award that is crafted with excellence. The Medal of Merit was made under strict quality requirements so that every recipient is presented with an expression of honor that will endure as a lasting memorial of their legacy for generations to come. Northwest Territorial Mint is honored to have designed and produced this extraordinary award for the American Commission and its affiliates, and we congratulate the recipients for their contributions to the entire American community. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the podium, Kerwin Kali. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Alagba Aaron Fulano. Please welcome Clifton Dikoto. Um, Mr. Dikoto is absent, and may I call Ms. Mr. Bob come to receive the award on his behalf. The name Papaniza is now ingrained in the culture of our country, having been immortalized in Calypso by the mighty Sparrow. Collecting on Papaniza's behalf is his grandson, Eugene Richardson. Please welcome him. Welcome, Lloyd Kerr. <laughs> Augustus Gus Lewis has worked tirelessly in the furtherance of the recognition of the American community's place in Trinidad's history. Unfortunately, Gus is not with us this evening. Can we ask Dominic to come and collect on behalf of Gus? Cloud. Please, please welcome the representative collecting Selwyn's medal. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Miss Ruby Thompson, who would receive the posthumous award on behalf of her husband. Mr. Franklin Connell Thompson. Let us welcome Peter A.C. Taylor to the stage. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I present Oral Augustus Saunders, 
to collect the award on behalf of his father, Leslie Augustus Saunders. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Leon Leslie Williams to receive his award. Please warmly welcome Mrs. Hazel Manning. Ladies and gentlemen, I present Ms. Gillian Chumet, daughter of Boise Huggins, to receive the award on his behalf. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I am honored to call Earl Bob Saunders to receive his award. to collect on behalf of Beryl Wood, Keith Wood. Pastor Robert Andrews, the American Commission will accept his award. <laughs> On behalf of John Hackshaw, Joan Mendes, his granddaughter, his daughter. I'm happy to present Akila Jeremogi. Raymond Tim Key. Before I begin, a minor oversight. Um, just earlier, Pastor Andrew's award was accepted by his great, 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 great granddaughter, Maya Graham, on his behalf. Edgar Leonard Macnish was born in Sixth Company Village to David and Hesse Macnish 88 years ago. Edgar's grandson, Niall Macnish, will accept the award on his behalf. Applause 
Let us welcome Tina Dunkley. Let's welcome Dr. Keith Clifford. Please let us warmly welcome Althea Blackish. Theodore is the director of the HEU, Center for Health Economics, at the University of the West Indies. He's professor of economics in the Department of Economics on the St. Augustine campus, where he's taught health e economics and supervised research for many years. He's led a multidisciplinary team of professionals in producing a number of technical reports for governments and international agencies. The work of the HEU team has been one of the main contributions to a, number, to a better understanding of the economic impact of HIV AIDS in the Caribbean and a better estimation of the cost of responding to the epidemic. Over the years, Professor Theodore has been an advisor to a number of governments and state agencies across the region. Professor Theodore is now responsible for training young economists to intensify the fight against HIV AIDS in every country of the region. Professor Theodore was unable to join us this evening, and as such, the Commission graciously accepts on his behalf. Dr. David Toby has been a consultant or the orthopedic surgeon at the Port of Spain General Hospital for the past 32 years. We welcome Dr. Toby to the stage. I now have the honor of, of presenting in the special awardees slash honorary awards category. Peter Hossein. Merle Gomez is here this evening to accept on Peter's behalf. professional career as an architect, planner, and educator in design spans over three decades. Over. And Join me in warmly welcoming John Weiss to the stage. Americans in Cooperation was formed over a decade ago with a commitment to the holistic development of the community of the company villages. The group has made its senior citizens event and the distribution of secondary entrance assessment scholarships two of its signature initiatives. Additionally, Americans in Cooperation have been recognizing the American Heritage Day on the 20th of August annually as it is the day our forth forefathers arrived in this country. The group has come a long way and has made serious impact in the community because of the commitment, passion, and perseverance of its members, especially Merle Bobcom Gomes, Hilary Bobcom, Lester Burton, Joseph Burton, Lisa Atwater, Marva Cooper, 
Anton Griffith, Rael Thomas, Marva Dingwell, Willis Bernard, Annette Teasdale, and others. Prison outreach also adds to the organization's scope, not to mention Americans Incorporation has worked with JCD and Associates in conjunction with the US Embassy to assist with the production of the documentary, The Americans, appeared before a joint select committee of parliament on land tenure and physical infrastructure in Trinidad and Tobago. In addition to the SCA exercise, which has translated into several students matriculating to tertiary level, Americans in cooperation have also sought to bring about educational opportunities by successfully offering free CSEC tuition. Notably, they conduct the American Heritage Walk annually on the 20th of August, aiming to keep the American legacy alive. Americans in cooperation. Honorable Minister, Community Development, Culture and the Arts, Dr. The Honorable <coughs> Naim Gatsby Dolly, Member of Parliament for Maruga Tableland, Dr. Lovell Francis. Other stakeholders, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen, American all. I have been given the task to express our heartfelt thanks and appreciation on behalf of American Commission. American Heritage Foundation, American Limited, and Americans Incorporation. What you have witnessed is not the Academy Awards or the Grammy Awards. It's the first ever National American Community Award and Recognition Ceremony. a very prestigious ceremony to Americans and all. We want to thank the Almighty God for this day, for the strength and courage and the privilege to celebrate this day as we continue to celebrate our bicentennial anniversary. Thanks to the Minister of Community Development, Culture and the Arts, the Honorable Nam Gatsby Dolly for her inspiring words and her very presence here tonight. We graciously thank you. <clears throat> Special thanks to Dr. Lovell Francis, the MP for Maruga Tableland, for his commitment and passion towards the development of the American community. <laughs> At this moment, I take time to thank the 27 awardees for their sterling contribution and commitment to society and to the Americans, and for accepting this prestigious award. For the posthumous awardees, we express our love and gratitude to their families for taking time off their busy schedules to accept and receive these awards on their behalf. These awards were long, long overdue. <laughs> Thanks to the entertainers, Ms. Chelsea Pigas, former Digicel Rising Star participant, Professor Ken Fillmore, a Spanish. <clears throat> Mr. Alistair Saunders, who rendered the national anthems. Thank you for your stimulating performances. Abebele, American entertainer, thank you in advance for your performance at the cocktail reception. <laughs> Special thanks to our sponsors, HR Technology Limited, C. Arthur, Magnish and Associates, NLC, NLCB, <clears throat> the presenters of this presentation, the Technical and Production Unit, Mr. Courtney Magnish for his leadership of the groups. <clears throat> Acts TV Network, 
members of the media. We would like to thank Ms. Shizad Bailey, who worked tirelessly and timelessly and beyond the call of duty. <clears throat> Fiola King Lawrence, thanks for a job well done. Ladies and gentlemen, tonight I take the liberty to thank, all, to thank the members of the American and the McNish family. This was not just a good idea, but truly a blessing. Their commitment to American and Americanism has bridged and united all American groups. We appreciate this effort and thank you tremendously for your contribution. <clears throat> for those who have contributed in a special way and we fail to mention your name, we take this opportunity to thank you. To all attendees and American supporters, thank you for sharing this evening with us. At this time, I want to invite you to a lecture on American legacy this lecture takes place on the 30th of November at Dagger Hall at the University of the West Indies at 6 p.m. Let us continue to embrace our watchwords. Success through sacrifice. Proud to be American. American all. Americans forever. Thank you and enjoy the evening's proceedings. Thank you. Thank you.